we would like to just um you know um go into the discussion of today now Tolusha, please could you start by telling us how anger is developed in men can you hear me can you hear me hey, you. I can hear you. yeah yeah so could you start by telling us how anger is developed in men okay so uh, thanks for having me first of all uh, I think like every other like every other human being anger is an emotion and every emotion has a trigger every emotion stems from something right and so whether you're a man whether you're a woman whether you have no gender what what separates us from animals right is the fact that even though science tells us that we are higher animals right but i mean right now i'm talking as, as humans that we are so whether what separates us from animals is the fact that these emotions exist within us and when things happen to us you know it triggers any form of emotion it could trigger happiness it could trigger anger it could trigger um anything right but you see with every emotion comes a corresponding action right so if you're happy you could be dancing if you're happy you could decide i want to take yourself out and spend on yourself and all that but if you're angry you also take action so anger in men could stem from things that have happened to them in the past because the question now is what are you angry at um, who are you angry at, right? Because sometimes you, say you are angry at this person. You are angry because this person has done that. So is that you are angry about what someone has done to you or you are just completely angry about someone, right? So it's important that we understand that as individuals, anger is an emotion. Okay, I think you're back up now. Right. So, anger stems from how we have been treated. It's an emotion that is very valid, right? It could be an emotion to something that has happened now or that is happening right now or something that has happened to you in the past and you think that you don't want to talk about it and you just want to keep it to yourself, right? So, men could get angry there because um, um, they've, been, they've, been, they've been abused or something has happened to them in the past, and that anger. But let me let me let me let me give a typical example. So I, I decided to go back to watch October One. Have you seen October One by Kuli Afolayo? No, I haven't. Okay, it's a movie you should watch. So I went back to watch October One. I think that was like three weeks or two weeks ago, and it depicts the story of a boy who was molested, a man rather who was molested as a boy back in secondary school. Uh, so he was in the village and then a missionary came to pick him and trust me, this story that I'm sharing from this movie happens it's still happening right now there's a boy somewhere who is being molested by a man that we do not know and so two of them were picked from the village and they were, taken, they were brought to Lagos to school, only two of them now when they got to, to, to the school both of them were being molested and so in the midnight, the Reverend Father would come, call both of them individually at several times, do whatever he wants to do, and ask them to go back to sleep. But one couldn't take it anymore. So he ran back to the village and tried to go back to his family. The other one wanted to go to school. He wanted education. Would you blame him for wanting education? Would you blame him for wanting to be educated? I mean, he wanted to leave the village, wanted to live the life of his dreams, to be schooled. So he stayed. And for six years, six years of secondary school he was molested by that man so he came back to the village and he brought that anger to the village and was raping girls and killing them wow the one he had done five his childhood best friend who happened to be female was supposed to be the sixth person now when he was asked, he said he was angry at the village, that the village sent him to Lagos to be molested. He was angry 
that they didn't take the female, but they took him. It felt as if they knew that the man had special interest in him. And that was why the man came for him. And so when you look at that kind of a scenario, that person is clearly angry. Angry at the society, angry at the parents, angry at the school. And so the reactions, right, were based on the anger that he has locked up. In fact, the time he came back to the village, he had graduated from the university. So calculate the number of years that he had been keeping that anger, waiting for time because he enjoyed the scholarship, went to the university. So six years of secondary school, plus another four years hmm. of tertiary education, 10 years. So he locked up that anger for 10 years. And then he came back dreadful. So my point basically is people get angry because things are done to them. And when those things are done, they're either forced to keep quiet. And so the opportunity that they have for an outburst, it becomes crazy. And that's why I think that, yes, men get angry. And because men are told, man up. <laughs> men are told to man up. And so they keep quiet because they tell them that, don't talk, don't talk. Um, like they will say in Yoruba or Korean, you know, your Korean means you're a man. Don't talk. And then they keep those things within them. But it doesn't change the fact that the person is angry. And so what we see, right, is a reaction to the anger that this person has within him. The anger did not start that day. The anger was True. Him. <laughs> so maybe, for example, the man is walking and someone steps on him. And out of anger, according to him, he slaps the man. Trust me, if you ask that man, it wasn't the stepping on his foot that got him angry. He had had experiences, and they had told him, don't talk, or they had made him feel like a boy. We are men. We are older than you. Keep short. But he realized that, look, enough is enough. Can I share another experience? Um, yes, you can. But I before know you, you have do, plenty of questions. <laughs> yes, we sent you your questions. So, so and you know that we just have like 15 minutes. So before you, no before you actually... You can actually share your experiences as we treat other questions. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. so you you just um you know you just highlighted how neglect, abandonment, abuse, you know, childhood traumas generally can impact a boy's mental health. And you know, these are the things that we don't even pay attention to, especially our parents, especially society. We just leave our boys to raise themselves. Now, Tolusha, please could you tell us um, okay, you've also highlighted the effect of, you know, all these angers. Could you tell us the impact this has on a man's, a man's mental health? Like a man that goes through neglect, trauma, abandonment, abuse, you know, any trauma, any trauma at all. What impact does this have on the boy's or man's mental health? Okay, so sometimes we grow with that mindset of, I want to be dependent. And you do anything whatsoever that you can do just because you want to be independent. Your self-esteem is crushed. You feel nobody cares about you. Nobody loves you. And so you want to do things all by yourself. You don't want to, you don't want to involve anybody. You lose the lifestyle. You lose the communal lifestyle. Um, and, and sometimes you realize that men go all out to do anything that they want to do. Because, so let's say, for example, growing up, right, they experienced this neglect, and there was that feeling that it's because their parents were not rich. It's why the society did not even reckon with them. Or maybe even the parents treated such a boy because they said, you're not brilliant. But there were other children in the family who were brilliant. And then such a child grows up. Such a child is going to have deep-rooted hatred. Mm -hmm deep rooted hatred for the family and it can even change the mindset that the child has towards raising family now such a child can grow up telling himself i will never marry True. marriage is of no use if it comes from a particular gender such a child can grow up to see gender to see that gender as nothing when i was very young uh as a boy, as a boy, uh, we used to have one housemate there who was molesting me, right? And, you know, my parents would travel and then she would come to my bed and do all sorts of things. And so as I grew older, for some point, I became very chauvinistic. I, I didn't really regard women as it were. 
In fact, it was terrible to the extent that I had a seat partner when I was in secondary school, and I chased that from my seat to go sit with another person because I had no regard. Now, why? So at that point, I began to I began to see the female gender like an object. I objectified the female gender, and if we're not some, if we're not, if I didn't reckon with you, you are nobody to me. But that anger was within me because it was done to me by a female. Hmm. Now, of course, these days we only hear stories, and with all due respect, I'm not trying to undermine the rape cases going on now, right? These days, we hardly hear stories of men or boys being raped. We hardly hear stories of men being violated or being abused, even by their own wives. But that's not the discussion for today. And like I said, the idea is not to undermine what ladies are going through right now by being recorded. Whether we like it or not, the, the statistics are still higher, right? True. But you see, my point is, now, if I didn't get help, imagine me growing up with that mindset of objectifying the female gender, with that anger that this lady did this thing to me, and I lived my life for so long with that, what that will bring is as I move around the streets, any opportunity that I have to hurt a female, I will do it. You know why? It's going to bring that satisfaction. And I will think that it's time for vengeance. And so neglect, right? And it's unfortunately... The same way we treat men is the same way we treat boys. Don't talk. Men don't cry. Um, you, are going up, you are going to grow up to become a man. This is how you'll be doing when you become a man and all that. And so neglect creates hatred. Neglect mm -hmm. creates disregard for laws and the society. True. Neglect creates anger within the heart of the boy child that it goes around with a vengeful thought that I'm going to get my own pound of flesh. One story that always rings in my head is the story of Shylock in the Merchant of Venice. When, when they had that agreement, and the agreement was like, look, I'm going to get my pound of flesh if you're not able to get this thing back. And Shylock was looking forward to getting his pound of flesh. He was looking for, it was, he already believed that the money would not come forth. And so he was expecting that this pound of flesh, I will get it. Now, I, I brought that up because when these things happen, deep-rooted in the heart of that boy child is the hope that someday I'll get my revenge. Someday I'll prove to you mm. that you have neglected me, but I'm better off without you. Mm. Someday I will prove to you that I can exist without you. And so you see boys today, irrespective of where they are, with this same mindset, and they do crazy things. They break into homes. Um, people will say unemployment. I agree, unemployment. But it's the truth of the matter that some people out there that in spite of the unemployment, right, they've gotten small businesses to do, and then they start from there. But you see, it depends on the experience that everyone has had. So my point basically is, whether we like it or not, we may not see the action today. Whatever it is that you are doing, to that boy child, since you are focused on the boy child, you are sowing a seed. So you're either sowing a seed that will make that boy child grow and appreciate that seed, or the child will grow and see the seed that you planted and hate the society, hate the system, hate everyone around him or her, and tell himself, again, around him rather, and tell himself, I'm going to get my vengeance. And that's what we see happening around today. Right, right, Tolushe. I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you. I believe that, you know, that's why we have a high rate of when we talk about violence, terrorism, you know, bombing, arm robbery, men are always at the forefront. And this goes to show that there are a lot of angry men that we are grooming and we are pumping back into the society and are making us and causing, um, you know, all sorts of violence against women and the society. Now, um, Tolushe, I'm sure you agree with me that a lot of people actually struggle with anger issues, but it's difficult for so many men and boys to actually admit, not boys now, men actually, talking about the effects on men now. It's actually very difficult for those men to actually admit that they have anger issues 
some of them i mean obviously because we don't talk about it enough men's mental health is not something that we talk about enough so how can a man identify how can how can what are the signs to show that a man is angry beyond what the eyes can see what are the like red flags to show that a man has anger issues you see that they are they are endless <laughs> there are endless red flags um but you see one that i think is very chief of all the red flags is if anything happens to you and the first thing that comes to your mind is to retaliate you have a problem if anything happens and the first thing you think of is to retaliate, that is the problem. And I will explain. Um, you are not weak if you do not retaliate. You are not weak if you do not pay the person back in his or own coin. No. You see, in, in neuroscience, we are taught that there is a part of our brain called the amygdala. Now, ideally, when you, when, something, when you want to take an action, you think. The amygdala allows you to process your thoughts and then passes it on to that part of your body that should take the action. But you know what happens when you are angry and you don't think? The amygdala is hijacked. And so, it's like, let me see if I can, if I can show it to us. So you have, you have a journey. You have a journey. You're going this way. And this is where you're supposed to pass, but this is where you're coming to. Now, when there is anger, this is where, let's say this is the amygdala. But you're, and the amygdala takes it, processes it, and then before it comes there. But when something happens to you, and out of anger you refuse to think, what happens? This amygdala is hijacked. And so instead of passing through this place, he just short circuits and comes here. And that's what happens. So if you know that any time you take any action, you find yourself not processing it before you act because of how you are feeling. Any action that you take based on emotions, any action that you take based on your current feeling, you need to ask yourself, why did I do that? Now, that's not to say that your anger is not valid. Look, trust me. If you don't get angry, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. It is all you do with the anger that is the issue. Because that you get angry is a sign that you're human. True. Sure. That you get angry is a sign that there are, there are, there are over 3,000 human emotions. But anger has come to express a lot of bias. So, when you realize that you act at the spur of the moment as a form of retaliation, that's a red flag. When you realize that everything that comes to your mind is how to take your own pound of flesh from the other person or you transfer it to another set of people just because somebody has hurt you, that's a problem. If you realize that deep down within you, you find it difficult to forgive. Now, when I say forgive, because let me say this clearly before people will come for me. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you will forget. Forgiveness doesn't mean that the law will not take its course. Forgiveness means that you will not take clause into your hands, but you allow the law to take its course because that's why there is a law against that offense. Forgiveness means that you let it off your heart, right, and let things take their course. Now, because for your own for your own sake, for your own sanity, unforgiveness is a load, is a burden that you carry on your chest. And the person who has wronged you is walking across the street having fun. And he's not even bothered if you are hurt or not. And so you need to check carefully to be sure that any action that you are taking, any reaction you are putting forth, is not because you want to take vengeance. Uh, people will say that I am impulsive, I am all that. It's okay to be impulsive, but you need to ask yourself, my impulse reactions, how, 
and I'm looking for the right word to use, how objective are they? Right? So there are a lot of things. And then I, I've also heard things like, that's why I am more. Wants to do anything to me, ah, I must do my own back. That's who I am. Oh, God, mm -hmm. that's not who you are. That's not who you are. The truth of the matter is, we all have that opportunity, that strength to process our emotions and put them out properly. Trust me, there is no action that you bring forth based on your emotion that is justifiable. If because you are, if, if, if because you are angry. You slap your fellow man, they will beat you blue black. If because you are angry, you molest a lady. If I catch you, I will beat you. Like I will, I will beat. I don't care what has happened to you before. You know why? And that okay. Let me not say why yet, because I know you have a question. But you see, the truth of the matter is, you begin to notice some things within you, your thought pattern how much of a rage that exists within you. Some married mm -hmm. men today beat their wives just because the soup is not sweet. It's not the woman that has a problem. It is you. And that's because you have created a weighing balance and then you are creating comparison. And the moment that happens, there is nothing that that woman wants to do that will make sense to you. Some mm -hmm. men today beat their children to stoop up all in the name of discipline. No. Mm -hmm. When you beat your child out of anger, you will not teach that child any lesson. What you would have done would not have been punishment. That would have been, that, I don't, if I can use the word battery, but it's not bad because it's not white. All you would have done, right, would have been brutality. Discipline comes with correction. True. And the child understands that you are correcting me. And so men need to realize that emotions are valid, agreed, but your reactions and how you act on those emotions is where people will hold you responsible. You right. cannot act based on your emotions. You can use your emotions as an excuse. Okay, you are hungry. Enter bank and steal now. Let them catch you. You're not explain right. to them that because you are hungry. <laughs> Solution. <laughs> Solution. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you. Um, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with everything you said. And however, we also need to consider some men that are constantly being exposed to situations that makes them angry. I think that it's important for us to actually consider that as well. So do you mind telling us some anger triggers? What are, you know, what are the things that actually triggers anger that we need to look out for, like, that men, basically, men need to look out for? I'll share another story. <laughs> now, you see, I used to be a very angry fellow. Like, I used to be very, I used to act on my anger growing up. When I was in secondary school, now this is not part of this, this is the story I shared on my page. When I was in secondary school, there was this girl that I liked. I liked her so much, like, so much. And then, it happened that in our, in our final year in secondary school, I became the senior prefect girl, and then she became the senior prefect girl. And then one day we had an issue. And then I was angry with her. I realized that anytime I was to do something, if for any reason, are you still there? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, okay. If for any reason I see her, there comes this rage within me. And anybody around me suffers for it. If you ask, if you ask those who were my juniors in school, that wasn't that kind of senior who was quick to flog. But I realized that any time she was around me, oh my word, the juniors used to suffer. So I realized that was a trigger. That seeing her was a trigger for me, and I knew I had to do something. If you have an ex, and every time you see that ex, or anytime you think about your ex, things happen within you, especially if she or if she was the one who left. And you realize I create something within you that makes you born with rage. You need to work on that. If you know that visiting your friend who is wealthy 
And because you are not wealthy, each time you visit him, you envy mm. him, and you are angry that your parents grew up not so wealthy, or they didn't send you to the kind of school that your friend went to, you need to watch it. If you realize that you are beefing someone because of what they have or where they have gotten to, and each time this comes to your mind, rather than appreciate where you are right now and appreciate the process, you are angry that you are not where you are. Look, you can be angry that you are not where you want to be, but what do you do with it? If you realize that that anger causes you to begin to think negative thoughts about yourself, or about that your friend, that's a red flag, watch it. If for any reason at all, realize that staying with the opposite gender is a problem for you. That each time you see a female, something in your head begins to create pictures of things that have happened to you in the past, or the things that you have watched, that's a problem. Let me share another story. While I was still in school, I realized at some point that any time I came in close contact with a female, I would have erection. And I was wondering, where is this coming from? Why would just coming in contact with a female, even if we are just talking like this, not that our body is even touching me, my head will start playing different scenes. I realized that that was trouble. And I realized that if I didn't pay attention to that, I would go back home, watch porn. Now, look at the journey. I would go back home, watch porn. After watching porn, I want to experiment. Now, if there is no one to experiment with, then masturbation starts. And then you grow up tomorrow, and then you begin to have dysfunctional men who are finding it difficult to comprehend or to even be satisfied by their wives, or they even go out and force themselves on a lady. And so I knew that there was a problem. So you know what I did? I stopped shaking. Like, I wouldn't even shake you as a girl. <laughs> because I realized that it's better to save my sanity than to create problems for myself in the future. The world never forgets. And the world is a small place. <laughs> you never can tell where the story will reach, and even your own self. And so I did that. And I told the comrade, I was like, guys, I have this problem. And so, and because, because of the kind of person I was, and so ladies are coming. Hey, Tulisha, what's up, what's up? Alpha, 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 alpha. They didn't understand. If I can bet that some of my classmates, except they are watching me right now, the majority of them never knew this story. Until I was able to get myself back. Mm -hmm. And that helped me. That helped me that by the time I got to university, I could hug a female and nothing would mm -hmm. happen. Sometimes we see these things, but we don't treat them. We don't think they are important for us to look out for. Any little thing, you are raging, you are vibrating, you are punching the wall. I see children, right? I see children who are angry, and they'll be stamping their feet on the floor. And the parents will be telling them, ah, it's just a child, just a child. Ma, sir, that child needs help. That child is a giving you reactions. That child will grow up and out of anger we punch the wall. That child will grow up and because he is angry, we punch a woman, we punch a fellow man to realize that oh God, there are levels to these things. Oh. And so parents need to also start talking to children right now. You need to start watching out for your children. You need to start, you need to begin to understand that the things that they show forth. They may be children, but they grow up with those memories. And if you don't correct them now, it will be difficult to correct. It's like a tree, it's like a seed that you have thrown into the soil. If you want to get that seed back, you have to remove it before it starts growing. And so when these things happen to us, we neglect them and we think they don't matter, but they actually do matter. So whatever things that are happening to you right now, whether you're an adult watching me or you are a teenager watching whatever level you are, Begin to pay attention to how you process the things that you hear. What kind of emotions do they trigger within you? The things that you see, what kind of emotions do they trigger within you? The things that you hear, what kind of emotions do they trigger within you? Don't neglect those emotions. Work on them.
Today we see men, and we say this is a great man. Oh, this man, this man has done that. But if you ask some of them, they are fought battles. They are fought battles that they didn't tell you about. And so when people say, I want to be like you, I tell them, Oga, do you know the things that I have dealt with? <laughs> are you still there? Yeah. Okay. Do you know the things that I've dealt with? I see. It brings me to it brings me to the story uh, in the Bible. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, so um, it's I fine. It's fine. Just go ahead. Bible. It's fine. When, go ahead. When the two disciples came to Jesus and said, "Can I sit by your right and my brother by your left?" He said, "If you can drink the cup that I drink, then you can." If we want to have men who are going to be examples in the society for our boys to follow, then we must also let them understand that this affluence that we have, the wealth that you think we have, did not happen to us by chance. And I, and I say this with every sense of humility and respect, that what is happening in the world today, you see young men who just graduated from school, but they want the wealth and the riches of someone who has been working for the past 30 years. And then they look at how much they are earning. And then they say it's too small. But they don't know. The person that they are comparing themselves with, they don't know how much that person started with. Look, when I, when I left the university, but I went to the private, and by the time I was graduating, my school fees was 450 k my first job was in a warehouse. And not just warehouse, I was picking things on the floor. I would offload from the truck. Sometimes I would leave the warehouse 2 a.m. Was I angry? Yes. I was angry that with all my education, that was the job I could get. But what did I do? That anger spurred me to keep working. Hmm. That anger hmm. pushed me to keep working. And mm. I told myself that I will put in my very best. I will not spend more than six months in this warehouse before we leave. Mm. And I left that warehouse in the sixth month. And I became a manager. But that anger has still not stopped me. Poverty is stupid. Nobody wants to be poor. But you see, the anger that you have towards poverty, let it drive you get to inspired. do things that are legitimate. Yeah. Let it inspire you to do legitimate things. And understand that yeah. life is a process. You grow. So men need to understand that whatever it is, as long as you realize that this thing brings up a bad feeling within you, check yeah. it. It doesn't have to make sense. As long as within you, it brings rage. It brings a bad feeling within you. Check it. I totally agree with you, Tolushe. I mean, awesome session. Now, speaking of rage, let's bring it down now to the practicalities. Now, for an angry person, what is the easiest way to actually stop rage? Like, and when I mean rage, at the point where you're angry, what's like the easiest way? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that, I mean, you're an expert. A lot of people would have told you that they can't stop themselves when they're angry. Once they're angry, they just need to go all out. Now, what's the easiest way to stop rage? So, I started sharing a story um, about what happened when I was in secondary school that someone threw bread with exhaust on my body. Now, and then I retaliated. And then that brought us, that brought both of us to the scenario council. And I was seeing up, imagine what it means as the student leader in the school. And they bring you before everyone on the assembly ground and they flog you. Why? Because of bread and egg. <laughs> but you see, after that event, I learned a lesson, and that changed my attitude towards anger. And the question I asked myself was, what would have changed if I had walked away? Hmm. What more impact would I have made if all I had done was to hmm. walk away, change my clothes, and then come back and say to that father, what happened? What did I do? Why did you show me that? He would have explained, because at the end of the day, I wasn't his target. I was only coming into the dining hall. He had had an issue. He was having an issue with someone else. 
And so his target was another person. But I came in at that point in time, and then it happened to me. And then I concluded that he attacked me. And I didn't even bother to ask why he did it. And so what I started doing was, if I'm angry, I know that, because if we talk about anger, it's only beyond doing things with your hands or legs. Sometimes the things that you say can put you in trouble. Mm -hmm. So what I would sure. do is, because I am angry, and I don't want to say things that I cannot correct afterwards. So you know what I would do? I will walk away. As I walk away, I'm asking myself, why did this happen? And then, but I'll come back to talk about this because there's a problem. Usually, people tell you to forget about things. But because you have not voiced it out, it remains within you. It doesn't take the anger away. You think the anger is away. The day you have the opportunity to talk, True. then it becomes very fresh before you. And so I would walk away and then think about it, ponder about it, and then I'll come back to about like, bros, I didn't like what you did the other time. You did this, you did this, you did this. I never have a conversation about it. Is it easy? No. Is it possible? Yes. How? Practice. Hmm. There is nothing in this life that is easy aside from sleeping. It's very easy to sleep, except you have sleeping sleep problems. But you see, what I would help you do is to understand why people are doing what they are doing and then allow you to make informed decisions even for yourself. Now, that's, that's the one that is not even going to, it's not going to cost you any money to walk away. Walk away, it doesn't mean you are stupid. It doesn't mean you are foolish. It doesn't mean you are weak. It only means that you are able to control yourself from acting at the spur of the moment. And I, I agree with men, you. Mm -hmm. I've seen men on the street of Lagos, small scratch on car. I'm not undermining how much you bought the car, but just scratch on car. Men that have children at home, we start the moving time. Do you know who I am? You must be stupid. Do you know who I am? At the end of the day, they start boxing each other. And then when you finish, you ask yourself, have I acted wisely? <laughs> well, now, the other one that might cost you money, the other one that might cost you money is to enroll, right? Talk to a professional to help you so through it. Solution, we we'll, would we'll, we'll get into that. Um, so about the traffic thing, solution. Let's let's not be point fingers. <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not point fingers because that one is when it happens to you that you really know. No, no, no. Like I said, like I said, like I said. I'm not, I'm not undermining the cost of the car. Please don't get me wrong. Because it's expensive yeah. to fix any car. I mean, no matter, even if it is, even if it is um, B2, the old B2 that has the boot in front, it's expensive to fix any car. So I'm not, I'm not undermining the cost of the car. Look, no, matter, no matter how much a car is, it's not money used to buy it. Money is money. Hey, but, but, like, you know, but my point is, but my point is, you know, you know what made you give that example was when you started with walking away. But in that situation, yes, I know that there are ways to actually handle. But in that situation, you cannot walk away now because uh, uh, the person has to fix your car. Like yes. it's just so. So so, so in how that kind of how road. best in that kind of situation solution now? How best do you think that a man that. He, that someone jammed his car in traffic can actually handle the situation without a rage, especially when he's a conductor. Especially when he's a conductor, please. I know you're smiling. Please, we need like we need serious <laughs> answers. Especially when he's a conductor that is not remorseful. How do you handle a situation in that particular situation? Now, there's a difference between doing the right thing and taking laws into your hands. Alima, if you take statistics, ask 10 men who have had their vehicles bashed by commercial bus drivers, how many of those drivers were able to pay for the damage? At the end of the day, it's frustration and frustration and frustration that you will get. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. It might be new, sir. Why some of them are not even remorseful? Agree. Now, what I am saying is this. Is it possible for you to have 
a law enforcement officer resolve that issue? Is it because I understand that you are not able to walk away from that scenario? But see, ask the men watching us now. How many of them have had no choice than to accept the sorry from the driver? And so after all the shouts, after all that, I will show you today. I will show you who I am. Is it because of that? At the end of the day, you realize that. You see that energy that you spent screaming at that person. God forbid, if you faint there, what will happen? You see, my approach, right, may not be realistic. But you see, if someone bashes your car, that's why I tell people, as much as possible, insure your car. Look, we live in a system where we underestimate things. People buy cars and refuse to do to insure it. Or they won't insure, but they don't even remember that they have insurance policy. Look, some people that have private cars don't remember that they have insurance policies when their vehicles are hit. The first that comes to their head is to prove a point. And you see, let me tell you the honest truth, whether everyone agrees or not, the average private car driver looks at the bus driver and conductor like refraps. <laughs> they look at them like can anything good come out of these guys. And we forget that there are some of these drivers who are also graduates like you are. But you see, the people that they are associated with have also taken away the education that they even received from them. Look, you know the funny thing? They themselves are angry that they are driving yellow bus and in your car with AC. And so when you come mm. out, I begin to want to prove your point of, do you know why I am? I'll show who I am. It creates a rage within them to tell them, mm. oh, God, it's not your fault. Mm. If not because of the way the economy is, it's not your fault. Because by the time you sit down, and both of you an analyze the whole issue, but they will realize that if only you had applied wisdom, you would have treated that driver better. And Thank so you, Tolu It's a game of both worlds. <laughs> Thank you, Tolu Shep. We're actually running because um, you know, Instagram logs you out after yeah, 15 after minutes. So we yeah, so we have to run now. So Tolu Shep, um, we know that men's mental health is something that um, you know, the world still isn't talking about or the world still isn't paying attention to. There's still a lot of stigmatization when it comes to seeking help as a man, especially when you are struggling with anger issues or any issue at all. So tell us, what are the professional helps available and where can men get help? If you identify that you have anger issues, where can you get help? First of all, you can mm -hmm. get help within yourself. And the first help that you can get with yourself is to accept the fact that there is a problem. True. That's the, that's the genesis. Second thing is, look, I tell people that no real professional will bring your matter to the world because you have sought for help. So talk to a professional. Some of you might say, I'll pray about it. It's a demon. It's fine. I'm not against prayers. I'm not against it. But you see, as much as possible, get help. I mean, I offer such service. There are also some NGOs who can offer you pro bono services, right? But if they now feel that you need much more, then they can ask you to talk to a professional. But the most important thing is, please understand that this is something that you need to deal with slide to the dm of anyone that you know that is a professional they won't expose you have conversations on them it's, it's not enough to just read books on anger management it's not enough but it's also good right it's a it's a it's a, it's a step it's a direction but as much as possible get someone to work with you to see that you overcome this you can you can send me a dm the organizations that also offer services like money there are also some that will ask you to pay um, right. Um, so seek help. Right. So right. So about payment, um, would like to know how much it costs as well because we hear a lot of people say, you know, get professional help, go see a therapist, you know, and then at the end of the day, 
please can you tell us how much these things cost so that we we have like a deeper understanding of how much it costs to get psycho psych, psychological support it varies from from persons to persons actually right can you uh, give us an average private so i think on the average uh per session is usually between five to ten people per session on the average and yeah, how many sessions average. do you need and how many sessions would you advise a man to get i can't advise how many sessions no like what's like um like we work with um ngos that offer psychosocial support to survivors and they would always advise that survivors come in at least three times before they can you know completely heal so judging from i'm, I'm sure that you have like uh, many years of experience judging from your your years of experience how many sessions do you think that an average man needs you know that to you know get back to so on to on normal. the average on the average I'll see. five i what hello okay. on the average five and when i see five not five days but five sessions. Those sessions will span across days. Those sessions will span across days, right? It's not just okay. the day. Those sessions will span across days. For the average, five. If the person keeps to the exercises and the task that he's given. Now, I see someone say a poor man on the streets cannot afford therapy. That's why there are organizations that offer free help. What I kind see. of organizations? So there is, um, there is money. Uh, that's mentally when i enjoy initiative there is joy inc there is joy inc for women there is she writes she writes woman because i know that there are females on this on this no for men no for men well. no okay men you can go to all right all right you can reach out joy inc also offers this service for free um I think there are, also, there are also some other ones that are, that are coming up. There's also Sparks Plus. Uh, I don't know if um, Laughter After Abuse offers, um, offers such service. But there are, there, are, there are organizations like that that offer you free, uh, free counseling sessions. I know of money because uh, I've been with them for a while. So they, you get free sessions, uh, about five sessions. Just for men, say, ah, for men what... right? Yes, yes. Where, where, where's that? Where's money? Where's money? money? Money, money operates across Nigeria. You don't need to walk in, and that's the beauty about it. You don't need to live where you are to actually use this service, right? It's it's virtual, so there is no there is no shyness, there is no fear of um, somebody somebody is going to talk about. You don't even need to use your real name. You don't even need to use your real name. You don't want them to know your real name. Right. Thank because you so much, Tolusha. Yeah, so that we can be able to save this live session. So, um, I think somebody has a question. Please, I'll just need you to... Um, yeah, so someone is asking, when you are angry with someone and you chose not to talk about it for... Um, make an excuse for them, does it indirectly affect how you relate with them? I, I, I don't know if you understand. I get a question. So, what the person is trying to say is, um, when you're angry with someone, you need to talk about it. Will it affect how you relate to them? Yes. Because you keep deceiving yourself that it's fine. But deep down within you, one day, you tell yourself, that's what she did yesterday. That's how she did yesterday. It won't be or the other. So it builds up. Yeah. It builds up in one way or the other. And yet, I agree that this is begin from home. If parents can start educating boys from now about how to handle their anger. So let every parent also understand that. Let me also say, as we round up, that anger management is not because you are angry. Hmm. Anger management classes is not because you are angry. Don't wait until you act out of anger before you attend anger management classes. You can attend an anger management class, right, just because you want to understand your own emotions yourself. Hmm. And my very good, my very good um, friend and uncle, Samoba Femi, is putting one together, I think 15th of this month. You can enroll, right? right? Reach out to Soka online today and enroll. Tell them, that you heard about it from Tolusha Francis. Go and enroll. Don't wait until you are angry. So we right, angry I agree. I agree. Thank you so much, Tolusha. Huh? Thank you so much. I got to learn a lot. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. All right, Tolusha, have a great day. So I'll share the link with you once we're able to upload it. Yeah? No problem. All right, then. Bye. Bye.
Thank you guys for joining. See you on Friday. Bye.